Hey guys, Mr. Klein here discussing uh, sedimentary rocks, chapter four, lesson three in your textbook. Uh, so you can go ahead, you'll be looking on pages 125 through page 129 in your textbook for that. So let's go ahead and let's look at the questions we're going to be answering. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to answer these two questions correctly. Question number one, how do sedimentary rocks form? And question number two, what are the three types of sedimentary rocks? In fact, we'll spend most of our time talking about those. Now, if you remember from our first lesson, we discussed the three types of rocks, uh, igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic. We're going to talk about sedimentary rocks. And we talked about the rock cycle and how a piece of the rock cycle included sediment, which was essentially, for our purposes, dirt. Uh, compression and cementation form sedimentary rock. Uplift goes up, weathering, erosion, and all that. Now. Uh, so let's get talking about this. Now, water and air can change the physical and chemical properties of rock. That's what we call erosion, and we'll spend some time talking about erosion later on this school year. Now, this change can cause physical and chemical changes to rocks. It can cause rocks to break apart, dissolve, or even form new minerals. And water is one of the main mechanisms that which this happens. And so what happens when water travels through rocks, some of the elements can dissolve and be what we call transported to new locations. These sediments are eventually deposited or laid down. Deposition is another important term we'll talk about. Erosion and deposition are related, as you can see right now. Things break apart, that's erosion, and they're transported and dropped off, that's deposited or lay down where they can accumulate in layers. And over time, these layers lay on top of one another. And we'll talk about, when we talk about the age of the Earth, this is an important part. Sedimentary rocks help us figure out the age of rocks and where they were deposited and things like that. Uh, so as young layers of sediment are deposited on top of older layers, think of it like a sandwich. And you start putting things on top of it. Okay, so you put your meat between your slices of bread. And let's say we put a large, heavy book on top of your set of, uh, on top of your sandwich. What's going to happen to that bread? Well, obviously the bread's going to get squished down. What if we put even more books on top of it? It gets squished more and more. And that's essentially how sedimentary rocks are formed. Uh, layers of sediment, mud, dust, dirt, sand, whatever, lays down. And then the water will evaporate, and then more sediment will come on top of it. And the weight will keep on pushing it down, and it'll force out all the water and decrease space between the grains during a process of what we call compaction. Okay, if something is compact, it's close together. Okay, a compact car is a small car. There's not a lot of space in it, and that's compaction. That's the first step. That's the first of two steps in sedimentary rock formation that's really important. Compaction. Layers land one on top of the other, and the weight of the, of the sediments push out fluids and other liquids and get them close together. Now, not only can compaction, it can lead to a process of what we call cementation, which minerals dissolve and water crystallize. They form crystals, and these crystals bond. Okay, Like I talked about in lesson number one, Concrete is essentially sedimentary rock formation in action. If you've ever seen concrete get poured, you have a substance called cement with sand and gravel. It gets mixed up with water. It gets poured out, and they lay it there. And so what happens is the water will evaporate, or even you can pour more concrete on top of it, and the weight of it will push out the water. That's compaction. What will happen is the sand and the gravel, they'll get really close to each other. And then the cement, the chemical itself, once the water's all evaporated, will cause crystals will form and will bond the sand and the gravel between each other. Okay, so that's cementation. The two important parts of sedimentary rocks, compaction and cementation. Compaction, like I said, is compact, the weight pushing the minerals and grains close and close to each other. And cementation is when crystals form that bond together or hold together like glue. Uh, these grains and these rocks and things together. So let's look at this. This is from a college textbook. Okay, The process of rocks being made is what we call lithification. There's two possible pathways, so let's look at this. Okay, Your starting point, you have your loose sediment. In compaction, okay, what will happen is the individual grains will push together. Okay, Through more compaction, we'll have what's called a sutric contact or flattened contact. That's where they 
kind of get jammed together. If you've used Legos before, okay, and you've played around with the Legos, you put the Legos and you press them together, the pieces lock into place. And that's essentially what happens in compaction. Or you can even have cementation, and there's times where both come together. Let me, we'll talk about that in a second. What will happen is during cementation, the grains, you'll have cementing minerals mixed with the water. That's these little parts right here, and here's the larger grains. Okay, through more cementation, there's more and more of these minerals that are put together, and the cement grows. Okay, and it fills in the gaps and locks the grains and minerals together. Okay, that may sometimes happen, which we'll talk about conglomerate and breccia rock in a second. But compaction will end up having cementation also. Once the contacts are come together and the grains are locked in, cementation will occur if you have minerals that bond together and the water goes away and evaporates. So that's how compaction and cementation are related. You have loose sediment like sand, okay? Compaction, more and more layers of sand sit on top of it, and over time it gets pushed together under pressure of all the weight and the grains of sand lock together. Cementation is whenever you have a mineral that will bond together and lock these grains into place. Now when we talk about grains, we're talking about really small grains. Well, this is a, a rock in northern Canada. It shows two types of rocks put together. You see on top, you see the sandstone, and if you actually look closely, you'll actually see the layers. Here's a sand layer, here's another sand layer with, uh, with the gravel going in, sand, so on and so forth. But at the bottom, we see a lot of rocks all cemented together. And what would happen is if we had a rock and we used the microscope to look at this, we could see, we can use the glass to observe the sandstone in various magnifications. Say fi at 50 times zoom, you see the individual rocks, they're kind of all pushed together, the individual grains of sand. Uh, we go to 500 times, you see the compaction and even, and even some uh, concretion going on right here. You see there's the small little gaps. And if we go in and zoom in even more, here are the individual grains of sand locked in together. Okay? And then if we look, zoom in even closer, these are the actual minerals, the actual grains of sand, the silicon, the silicates in there for that. So as you can see, you can see how sedimentation works. Okay? Now we have sandstone, that's a common type of rock. Uh, in northern Louisiana we'll have that, but we'll also have two types of what we call conglomerate rocks, which we'll talk about in a second. So just like igneous rocks, we can classify sedimentary rocks on how they form. Okay? Uh, first off are clastic rocks. Clastic rocks are the main type of sedimentary rocks. They're broken pieces of mineral and fragments. These broken pieces are what we call clasts. Okay? They can be from really small uh, grains of sand to big, huge chunks of rock like you saw in this example right here. Okay? We can go from fine sand all the way to pebbles and full-blown other set rocks put together. Now, the size and shape of the class determines which agent deposited it. In other words, agents with enough energy to move large class, like high winds, fast-moving water, tend to move large, well-rounded sediments. So if we could look at this, we see these kind of rounded rocks. They were probably pushed around by fast-moving water, high winds, and things of that nature. However, calm environments, such as the bottom of a lake or a bayou or something like that, tend to have what we call fine or small sediment. So what happened was there wasn't enough water or wind pushing eroding it down. So it pretty much locks into place on how it was when it was deposited. Now, there are two types of sedimentary rock that I want to show you that show the difference of the types of class right here. This one on the left is what we call Brescia rock. Brescia comes from the Italian uh, for a particular type of cement. And Brescia rock essentially has class that are angular. This actual piece of rock was made at a meteorite impact. In other words, a meteor hit the ground and it hit with so much force and so much speed uh, and so much pressure that the shock wave gr put together the sand and all the rock fragments. You see this large piece, it looks like granite right here. It's all nice and angled. So there wasn't a lot of forces that could smooth the angles down. And so it's locked into place. And what we have on the right right here is what we call conglomerate rock. Brescia rock and conglomerate rock. Conglomerate rock is a classic made of class that are rounded, which means it was pushed through at high speeds of water, or a lot of water passed over, or a lot of wind, 
And if you notice the individual class, they're a lot more rounded. You might still have some flat surfaces, but the majority of majority of class are rounded. If we were to drill down and under Louisiana, we, and whenever we would hit the bedrock, we would find this conglomerate rock where we're at in St. Mary Parish. In fact, in the United States, the most dominant part of type of rock is sedimentary rock. Okay, so let's move on. And let's talk about the second type of sedimentary rock. First are clastic rocks. Then what we have what are called chemical rocks. Chemical rocks form when minerals crystallize directly from water. Remember the rock salt, halite? That would be considered a chemical rock. Particles can crystallize out of a saturated solution to form minerals. If you forget for what we talked about minerals, saturation point is when you can't have any more of the solid floating around the solution. If you were to pour salt into water and keep on stirring it, there would come a point where the water couldn't hold any more salt and the salt would just settle at the bottom. Okay, so that's after you've passed up the saturation point. So particles will crystallize out of saturated solutions. Chemical rocks often have an interlocking crystalline texture. In other words, the crystals will lock together because of the bonds within itself, which means you'll have cleavage. You won't always have, you won't always have fracture. You most of the time will have cleavage with these chemical rocks. Now, the crystalline structure of a chemical rock is similar to the structure of intrusive igneous rocks from your last lesson. Remember, intrusive igneous rocks are rocks formed by magma that does not, uh, I'm sorry, that, uh, molten rock that does not break the surface, so it's magma. So chemical rocks and intrusive igneous rocks are similar, but here's the difference. Uh, chemical rocks are composed of one dominant material. For example, halite, it's sodium chloride, salt, it's exclusively that mineral. However, intrusive igneous rocks will have a variety of minerals. Like if you remember the granite from last lesson, you saw the individual flecks of mica, feldspar, and quartz. Okay, those are three types of minerals, whereas chemical rocks will only have one type of mineral. And here's an example of chemical rocks within sedimentary rocks. All these white that you see, all these little white lines, are actually veins of gypsum that we use for sheet rock. And if you remember from our last lesson on blackboard, uh, uh, from the last chapter on minerals, gypsum is mined in wind parish in Louisiana and it's used for drywall. Okay, so each of these individual lines were lines of gypsum that was probably in a saturated water solution. The water evaporates and the gypsum is just left over. So we have clastic rocks, we have chemical rocks, and finally we have what are called biochemical rocks. Biochemical rocks are sedimentary rocks that are formed by organisms or contains the remains of organisms. Most of Earth's limestone formed with the help of marine organisms. That's the white looking gravel that you see uh, on roads, okay, on sides of roads. Limestone is used a lot in construction applications. Uh, if you go to an oil field company, the pipe yard or the yards they work in, it's used with limestone. Limestone, uh, when it's in a powder, will form a cementing agent, okay, so cementation will occur. And also, it, it beds down real well when it's compacted, and it forms a nice smooth surface. When I used to work in my testing lab, we would do testing on limestone to make sure it was compacted enough. And whenever I worked in construction, before I went into this uh, engineering field, uh, we would do pipe yards, and we would lay down tons upon tons of limestone, uh, spread it out, water it down, and then compact it in order to form that hard surface. Now, limestone was formed with the help of marine organisms. Usually the shells of dead marine organisms would form the limestone. We could also find a lot of fossils in biochemical rock. They used dissolved substances in ocean to form part of their hard shells. After organisms die, the hard parts of their bodies compact and cement to form limestone. So what I just told you about a yard of uh, where we did with pipe and stuff like that, you would actually, that's how the cementation takes place. Much of Earth's limestone is made of carbonate minerals. It's uh, carbonic, which we'll talk about whenever I show you guys the demonstration with regards with acid. Okay, car carbonate bases will be uh, a base. They're going to apply an acid to it. We have an acidic reaction, and limestone will boil and bu will bubble when exposed to an acid. Now, some biochemical rocks will contain silicon and oxygen instead of carbonates. Okay, so some of them will be considered silicates, but most of them include carbon because they came from living things. Finally, 
the final energy resource, one that we use a lot of times known as coal, is a biochemical rock composed of the remains of plants and animals from prehistoric swamps. Coal is mainly composed of old plant matter that's died, compacted, and cemented together under high pressure. And if we look at this right here, okay, coal seen between layers of sedimentary rock. You see right here, uh, here's the layers of sediment, and you see there's different layers of sediment, different colors. And then down here we have this dark material. This dark material is coal. And whenever you have a piece of coal, a layer of coal between other layers of sediment, we call that a seam, a seam of coal. And we normally find coal in older uh, mountain ranges and stuff. And when we talk about different types of, we talk about the Earth's crust and tectonics, and also when we talk about uh, different types of the natural resources we use, we'll talk about where coal is found in the United States and why it was so important as an energy source and why we're running out of it. Okay. So that's our lesson. By the end of this lesson, you should have been able to answer these questions correctly. Now, how do sedimentary rocks form? Well, if you remember from the beginning of the lesson, sedimentary rocks form through a process is what we call compaction. It's when rocks are squeezed by pressure or, and or cementation, where rocks are bonded through minerals. Okay, the minerals compact uh, and they dry out and the crystals form and they lock the individual grains into place. And what are the three types of sedimentary rocks? Well, there are clastic sedimentary rocks, chemical sedimentary rocks, and biochemical sedimentary rocks. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. If you're watching this on YouTube, point out all the typos and all the things uh, you like or don't like about it. And until next time, we'll see you then.